Hi students and welcome to today's second live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you had a fantastic and productive week and I hope you're looking forward to an amazing weekend. Students, in this class we are looking at IELTS listening about taxes and Newton. It will be part three and part four of the listening exam. I'd like to welcome Josie uh, and Gopu, our two newest uh, channel members. That's fantastic. Nice to have you with us, the both of you. Uh, it's lovely to have you on board. Uh, students, this lesson, this material, uh, it's by aehelp.com. These live classes are powered by these websites, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. And that's where you need to go and sign up for our premium IELTS package when you get a moment. Uh, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. All you have to do is click that big red button I just circled above my head there. And we are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent. Uh, my degree is in psychology. I have been teaching IELTS for almost 20 years and English for uh, more than 25 years. So you're in good hands. Uh, for general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. Click this big red button there that's just above my head. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We will use this website in just a few moments for the listening audio. Uh, and you can use the code GAMER9 for that 10% discount from our most recent uh, release. Chen, good to have you in the class. Or welcome our chat moderator. Chen is here to help us with instructions and questions. So you can ask Chen as well in the chat there if you need some assistance. Uh, students, um, Instagram, uh, IELTS underscore A help, GLs help. Uh, check that for our weekly schedules and vocabulary and reels. Uh, for questions, you can also always send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com or admin uh, at aehelp.com. And uh, our classes are weekly, Thursday to Saturday. Uh, tomorrow we will have speaking part two and speaking part three. Uh, we've got a really good video up for you on the YouTube channel that's a pre-recorded mock IELTS speaking interview. You can check that out with a German candidate. She does a fantastic job. There's the uh, link in the chat for everybody. All right, everyone. Here we go. So uh, listening strategies. Uh, we started this listening test last week. Um, we did part one and part two. If you missed that, it's not a big deal. Um, listening parts are independent. Each part is unique, okay? The listening section is about 50 minutes. You've got about 40 minutes of listening and answering and then 10 minutes to check and transfer answers to answer sheets. A computer-based exam, it's a little bit less time at the end, but still you have time to check your answers, okay? So the strategy I showed you last week is to check the topic of uh, each uh, part uh, during the instruction time, and we did that. Uh, listening strategy, just like the reading class that we had um, half an hour ago, you need to visualize, okay? So see what you are hearing and become a part of the information. So make your brain interested. Okay. All right. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So here uh, we will jump to um, our reading test. For everybody, this is our uh, third exam from our first exam book on the website. Okay. And uh, as we know, this was about taxes. So write no more than two words and or number for each answer. Um, so if an Egyptian's income was 10,000, how much would be given to the Pharaoh? So what's the tax, right? And then it says the first reason mentioned for taxes is. All right. Now, when we picture taxes, 
what can you see? So what do you see when you visualize taxes? And this is kind of an abstract topic. So here's a good question. How do you visualize taxes? <laughs> okay. Now, some of you, especially younger uh, students who don't necessarily pay taxes yet, um, you might be like, eh, who cares about taxes? We all do. <laughs> Wait till you get older. Um, so uh, death and taxes, right? That's what they say in the U.S. anyway. Two certain parts of life, death and taxes. Uh, so what do you see when you, see t when you, uh, when you visualize taxes? Carolina says taxes are a headache. <laughs> Indeed, but you can't visualize that. So what can you see? How can you see the concept of taxes? Okay, Abdul Rahman says, I paid back in 2020, but never booked a session. Can we book again? Uh, Abdul Rahman, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, send me an email, maybe a speaking session. Okay. Uh, Dylan says, I see myself calculating the amount of money that will be deducted from my salary. Okay, Dylan, good. So you're sitting there with a calculator going, okay, I have a 25% tax. I made $100, so I have to give $25 to the government. Hi again, Natty. Um, Jatinder says, contribution. Josie says, I'm an accountant. Okay. Yeah, that's getting uh, to be on the right track. Okay, so um, I visualize uh, myself looking at my paycheck, okay? Paycheck, and I see that $500 has been deducted for taxes. Now that's one side of the coin, right? But I also see that my daughter's teacher is getting paid by the government from that $500. Okay, that's kind of one of the funny parts of taxes. Um, and again, it's true for some of the younger uh, viewers. You don't think about taxes yet, but a large part of our lives and the lives of younger people, especially uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, and such, uh, it's all funded or much of it is funded by taxes. The roads that we use, right? I'm driving to work, do do do. Hey, how did that road get there? Taxes, do you see that construction worker? They just got paid from taxes, right? In most places. Okay, so roads are not privately owned, right? So we don't like paying them, but if you visualize where those taxes are used, so not just paying the taxes, but using that tax money, then um, you will understand it more, okay? Um, as some of you know, I'm Canadian, and in Canada, we have provincial and government tax on sales as well. Uh, currently in BC, so uh, where I live in British Columbia, uh, the sales uh, tax on uh, many goods is 12%. So you buy a car for $10,000. And uh, while well, cars actually have more than just sales tax, but uh, anyway, let's just imagine that we live in a world. And you know, in many countries, the tax is included in your uh, total cost. In Canada, it's not. So when tourists or when people come to Canada, they always get surprised <laughs> by the tax. So they'll buy groceries and it'll be $100. And then suddenly when they pay, it's $112. And they're like, what? Who's stealing my money? Um, in Canada, they do not include the tax into the item. You pay for it at the end, at the till. So car for $10,000, you pay 11200 at checkout. 
Okay, that's a nice big surprise for many people when they come to Canada. All right. So unlike many countries, Canada does not include the sales tax into the price at the store. So you always have to think that much more when you're uh, checking out, okay? Blue Bar says it's better. Yeah, it's more transparent. So some people think it's a bad surprise, but it's actually more transparent. So you, you know what the actual cost of the item is and what the actual tax is, right? In countries where they put it together, you're kind of like, how much is the tax here? How much am I actually paying? Um, so that's a difference. But anyway, that's your visualization. So that's how you see it, okay? So visualize listening, visualize the topics, make it connected, so connect yourself. Okay, Carolina says, yeah, that was weird when I was in Canada. Yep, you get used to it, okay? Okay, so uh, let's, um, let's do this. Let's do some listening, everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, listen and answer these questions, become a part of it. So if the first question is, if an Egyptian's income was 10,000, how much would be given to the Pharaoh? Um, become the Egyptian, okay? So here you are as the uh, Egyptian and you uh, walk like an Egyptian and you talk like an Egyptian. <laughs> so you're like, what? <laughs> okay. So um, you are an Egyptian and you're giving your uh, taxes uh, to the uh, to the Pharaoh, okay? For some reason, my annotation device is having an issue here with me, and there we go. There's your head, uh, there is your, uh, let's see, let me, let me get this done here, all right. Uh, it's having a fit, but anyway, there you are, there's the Egyptian, and maybe you have a uh, bag of money here. Uh, let me just try this. There we go. All right. So you're the Egyptian and you're handing money to the Pharaoh. That's what I'm trying to go for here. All right. There. Okay. I'm trying to draw the head, AJ, but my annotation tool was having an issue for some strange reason. Okay. Um, so we're going to play this. Uh, you listen and answer and put the answers on a separate sheet. Don't put it into the chat. Give everybody a chance to answer on their own. We'll go through the answers together after and we'll talk some strategies, okay? Again, this audio is going to come from our website, so uh, we're going to hop over there. You can see that um, it says that uh, it's track uh, three and... Uh, CD3, so let's do this. Let's go over to the website. We go to our My Student Account, click those red buttons to join the premium version. We go to the audio CDs, lots of audio CDs there. These are the exams with aehelp.com. We've got six of them. We're releasing four more this year. And uh, CD3, track three, get ready everybody to listen and answer. Now turn to section three. Take some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Listening section three. You will hear a public forum discussion between the moderator and two contributors, Dr. Philip McPhee and Dr. Ron Tatum both political scientists at the local university, talking about the nature of taxes in society. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. First of all, 
I would like to thank Dr McPhee and Dr Tatton for taking time out of their busy lives to spend this evening with us. Thank you for having us. Dr McPhee, could you give us a little bit of the history of taxation? Certainly. Taxes have been around almost as long as civilization itself. There are records of taxes being collected by Egyptian pharaohs approximately 5,000 years ago. It was customary to give 20% of your production to the pharaoh, and those who evaded taxes were severely punished. Dr Tatum, what are the reasons for taxes? Well, there are essentially three major reasons for taxes. The first and most obvious reason is revenue. Governments need money, and taxes fulfil this need. The government then spends this tax revenue on investments that are good for society, such as healthcare, schools and roads. Funding the army would fall under this category as well. The second reason for taxation is for the redistribution of wealth. In simpler terms, this means taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. Many societies do this out of a belief that it is the responsibility of the government to look after the poor people in society. I'll let Dr McPhee talk about the final reason for taxation, called repricing. Thank you, Dr Tatton. Yes, the third main reason for taxation is called repricing, and by this we mean changing the price of a product to a different, generally higher price. This may sound quite strange, but if you bear with me, you'll see that it makes perfect sense. In general, products are allowed to be priced in a free market, that is to say, Whoever can provide goods for the lowest price is the most successful. However, there are certain types of goods that we don't allow to go to the free market. In many countries, these are goods like tobacco and alcohol. These goods are subject to a repricing tax, which is used to discourage people from using the product. Also, these repricing taxes help offset the future medical costs associated with the people who use tobacco and alcohol excessively. You now have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 27 to 30. Very well. Do you favour higher or lower taxes? I am a strong proponent of higher taxes. The reason for this is simply that it is easier to make money when you already have money. This gives a massive advantage to those people who may have inherited money or come from rich families. Because money is so much easier to gain for these people if used wisely. Taxing them seems only fair and for the greater good. This compensates the poorer sections of society who really have little or no hope to gain financial success. I understand Dr Tatum's position, but one has to be wary of the fact that if taxes are too high for businesses, then those businesses will leave the country in favour of countries with lower taxes. Of course, it would be nice if we could legislate a worldwide tax structure, but this is simply not attainable. And I'm sure by the time it becomes attainable, Companies will likely have opportunities to leave for another planet with more favourable tax structure. <laughs> yes, you're right, Dr McPhee. We must always be mindful of staying competitive. It is like a tightrope we must walk between compensating those less fortunate and being able to stay competitive in the market. Because if we fail to be competitive, then tax revenue will dry up, resulting in no money at all for the lower economic classes. So this is an extremely difficult balancing act. Which leads to my next question. What is the future of taxation? I believe you will see higher taxes in 50 years than there are today, just as we have higher taxes today than 50 years ago. We will need even more money for projects like high-speed transit, new roads, new technologies. Also, with an ageing population, medical costs could soar in the near future, resulting in higher taxes to support this healthcare system. I think the future will be a lot like the present, walking the tightrope as Dr Tatton mentioned. Where that takes us, I'm not sure. If I had to guess, I'd say higher taxes for the reasons Dr Tatton outlined. However, another important variable to consider is whether free markets can really be... A... That is the end of section three.
You will now have half a minute to check your... And then let's check those answers in that half minute. Okay, everybody, we'll go through the... um, We'll go through the answers together and I'll discuss some of the strategies you probably saw me uh, do as uh, we were listening here. So here, um, let's uh, let's take a look at question 21. Let's uh, give the answer and then we'll talk about it and we'll discuss how we arrived at that answer. So here, if an Egyptian's income was 10,000 teals or whatever they used at that time, how much would be given to the pharaoh? Okay, the pharaoh is like the king. Okay, you don't need to know that. It's not important to know what the pharaoh is. It's how much is given to the tax man, the king, the government, <clears throat> right? Okay. And the correct answer here is by Chayani and Carolina and Tanya and Dylan. It's 2,000, it's not 20%. Okay, so why do I know it's 2,000? If you write 20%, you'll probably get it wrong. Uh, they're looking for the answer as 2,000. Why? Because they give you a specific number. So um, it's called an, this is called an inference type question. You need to use the given information to figure out the answer. Uh, in this case, 20% um, of 10,000 uh, equals 2,000. Okay, IELTS is a thinking exam, everyone. It's not just, uh, did you catch that English? Did you catch that word? It's not a did you catch that word, um, especially not for band seven, eight, nine. To get band seven, eight, nine, you have to think throughout the IELTS exam. Um, here, 20% of 10,000 is 2,000, therefore the answer is 2,000, okay? It's called an inference type question, okay? Inference means you inference from the information given, okay? AJ, it is a math-based uh, question, okay? So you have to be careful with that. They probably will not give you the mark for 20%. Okay, it's 2,000 is the definitely the, the correct answer. All right, number 22, the first reason mentioned. Uh, by the way, students, this is section three. So if the answer seems a bit too easy, like 20%, take a second look, okay? So um, here, let me give you a tip, okay? Be cautious of inference type questions in the listening. If the answer in part three or four seems a bit too easy, uh, take a second look. Okay, makes sense? All right. Um, so the first reason mentioned for taxes is, and most of you got this, it's revenue to make money, right? Government needs to make money so that they can use that money for society. So infrastructure, schools, roads, hospitals. The second reason for taxes known as what? So number 23. And here you just had to catch these words. You really just had to catch it. AJ says it's redistribution. Yeah, it's not distribution, it's redistribution. So you redistribute the money. Okay. Uh, in Canada, we call that redistribution welfare. So uh, those who are not able to work or those who do not have a job, uh, they get what's called welfare. I'll teach you that word here in a second. Okay, so here it's the redistribution of tax. Okay. Uh, Canada has what's called welfare. A monthly allowance given to those people who are not able to uh, work so that they can afford a home, uh, food, and clothing. Okay, 
It's called welfare. All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, you take money from those who have it and you give it to those people who don't have it so that society stays somewhat stable. Now, the third one was repricing, right? So giving different prices to different products. Uh, here we had a flow chart and you have to really pay attention. So it says write the correct letter. Make sure, especially for those of you doing the paper-based exam, do not write the word, but write the letter. Okay, so uh, here we had uh, uh, repricing. So those products which cost society money for hospitals, for police, for other reasons. Uh, a good one for that is, of course, alcohol, right? So um, alcohol, it costs money for healthcare and for police because alcohol causes a lot of problems. Canada has the highest alcohol taxes in the world. So alcohol is very expensive in Canada because police and hospitals are very expensive in Canada. Okay, so uh, product uh, 24, allowed to go to the free market. So there's no repricing tax. Which one is that? D, repricing, allowed to go to the free market for number 24. No Sherpa. Number 24 is not D. Bopur thinks uh, 24 should be F. Uh, no. 24 is, that's right Amra, it's E. It's E. Okay, so uh, 24 is general goods. So general goods like um, mobile phones, toys, electronics, books, general goods that you can buy, okay? Amra says just use logic, right? Logic makes a lot of sense. I agree, Amra. Logic does make a lot of sense. So uh, general goods, okay? So number 24 is E. E is the correct answer. All right, number 25 is um, repricing right or 25 and 26 subject to repricing tax so uh, number 25 B that's right hang very good alcohol alcohol is not allowed to go to uh, the free market um, it has a repricing tax so 24 is E 25 is B 26 is D. Okay, logic will help you here. Good job, Chen. Nicely done. Okay, Gopu. Nicely done. All right, use your logic, students. Um, about thirty to forty percent of the answers on the IELTS listening, you can actually figure out from logic without even listening. Right. So it's a it's significant, so you should never panic, okay? Welcome them all. All right. So uh, product, general goods, allowed to go to the free market. Alcohol, not allowed to go to the free market. Okay. Now here, uh, number 27 to number 29, this was a multi-multiple choice question, okay? You have to have three correct answers to pick up three points. If you have one correct answer, you pick up one point. Two, two points, three, three points, right? So here, there's a lot of information and what happens to students often is they're looking at these choices and then they run out of time and they don't get any of them. So instead of doing that, take notes. Okay, that's why I put that there as your strategy for this type of question. So I wrote, too high, they leave the country. There's no world tax system. They have to stay competitive, and um, if there's too many taxes, then there'll be no taxes left for people who need the tax money, okay? All right, let's take a look at the choices and we can see which ones match. Um, a, it is easier to make money when you are already rich. That's for higher taxes, not lower taxes. 
B, businesses will leave the country if taxed too harshly. Yes, that was in my notes, right? So B is a good one there. Inheriting money requires no hard work. Mm, that doesn't make sense for um, low taxes. A country must be able to stay competitive in the global market. Yeah, they said that. They said competition is important. It's important to be competitive. If you tax the companies a lot, the companies cannot compete. Um, e, a worldwide tax structure can be implemented. No, the person says it cannot be. It's not possible yet. Yet. Lower taxes in the end end up benefiting everyone, including the poor. That's what they said. They said uh, if there's too many taxes, poor people don't get money. So if taxes are low, you can actually give more money to the poor, which is kind of interesting. So the correct answers are B, D, and F. B, D, and F. Students, uh, how did you do? from 10 what did you get in part three gopu says i got two right carolina says number 30 is missing did we miss number 30 yeah let's look at number 30 thanks carolina it's hard to know so if somebody said 10 out of 10, Habib, 10 out of 10, how do you know that? We haven't done number 30 yet. Um, number 30, uh, what do the speakers believe about taxes in the future? Um, multiple choice questions, listen for the answer. So I changed this to I believe, and they actually said that. It was a good guess by me. And the speaker's like, I believe in the future we will have higher taxes. So the correct answer here was C. Okay, now I ask you, what did you get from 10? Okay. Yeah, number 30 was not too bad. Sometimes those last questions are kind of given. Hank says seven, seven is good. Um, for part three, you should try to get at least six or more. So if you got six or more, Snehal, nine is fantastic. Yanni, eight is good. Yanni, why are you upset with eight? Eight is good in part three. AJ, seven, solid. Muhammad, six, not bad. It's it's borderline, okay? So as long as you're getting at least six in part three, you are okay. All right, so let's go to uh, part four. Now, part four, as we know, is Isaac Newton. Okay, it's about Isaac Newton. Born in 1643, almost 400 years ago, to be more exact, 380 years ago, Newton was born. Wow. We, we've known about gravity for almost that long? Who knew? Okay. When you read about a special person, like a scientist, like Isaac Newton, become Isaac Newton. You are Isaac Newton for this listening, okay? So this is you, you're happy Isaac Newton. You've got some mad scientist hair, okay? Isaac Newton is uh, famous, of course, for uh, the apple that fell on his head. Okay. So, bong, you've had an apple fall on your head. Although, a lot of people think that's just a story. It never actually fell on his head. Um, so, you visualize, yes, if you're Isaac Newton. Okay. And you've had an apple hit you in the head. Become interested. Yanni's all about physics. <laughs> okay, all right, um, here we go. So uh, let's listen, let's answer these questions, and again, we'll go through the answers together, okay? All right, use a headset if you got them. Domenico, if you're there, use that fancy new headset. Okay, 
All right, everybody, um, here we go. So let's hop back to our website. Again, students, our website's got so many goodies for you. It's definitely worth joining our premium IELTS package by clicking those big red buttons on the general IELTS and on the uh, academic IELTS, okay? So um, we're going to the next one here. Don't put your answers in the chat. Give everybody a fair chance. Don't confuse people with wrong answers. Put it into a separate uh, document or on a separate paper, okay? Here we go. Now turn to section four. Take some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Listening section four. You will hear a lecture about English scientist Isaac Newton. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Today we are going to discuss the life and achievements of the famous English scientist Sir Isaac Newton. Many consider Newton to be the most brilliant man to have ever lived and many consider his achievements the greatest ever achieved by one man. Newton himself was not so sure as he famously told his followers, if I have seen further it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. While it may be true that he built upon the foundation of scientists before him, he still managed to see further than anyone else had, and to this day his accomplishments stand the test of time. Isaac Newton was born in England in 1643. He studied at the King's School in Grantham from age 12 to 17. After leaving school, his mother tried to make him into a farmer, but that was not going to be sufficient for young Isaac. A year later, in 1661, on the recommendation of one of his teachers at the King's School in Grantham, Newton was admitted to Trinity College in Cambridge, where he eventually became a teacher six years later. Newton is perhaps most famous for his work on gravity. A well-known story says that Newton realised the nature of gravity while he was sitting under a tree and an apple fell on his head. This story may or may not be true, but the underlying principle is valuable. Newton made the astonishing discovery that the same force that makes an apple fall to the earth also makes the earth revolve around the sun and the moon revolve around the earth. Until this time, scientists such as René Descartes and Gottfried Leibniz had believed that the planets moved in some sort of matter, something they called an ether. Newton demonstrated that no such ether was required. Descartes and Leibniz also had little explanation for why apples fall to the earth. Newton's theory accounted for this almost perfectly. During the 20th century, Newton's theory came under attack by the German physicist Albert Einstein, whose theory of relativity was said to replace Newton's theory of gravitation. This is simply not true. Einstein's theory is a landmark achievement in science, but it did not replace Newton's theory, it merely improved it. To picture this, think of a smooth ball, perhaps a billiard ball. In this experiment of the mind, Newton tells us that the ball is smooth. However, Einstein says that the ball has small imperfections, dents, cuts and scrapes. Who is right? The answer is both of them. Newton is correct on a macroscopic scale. When we look at the ball from a distance, the ball is smooth. However, Einstein is correct as well. The ball does have imperfections. He is correct on a macroscopic and a microscopic scale. Another of Newton's important achievements is the reflecting telescope. Previously, Galileo had used lenses to construct his telescope. But Newton was the first to use mirrors in a telescope. Today's telescopes are almost all made of mirrors as opposed to lenses, which again speaks to Newton's brilliance. There are a number of reasons the mirror is an improvement over the lens in telescopes. First, mirrors do not warp as easily as lenses do, and by that I mean that lenses can lose their shape in hot or cold weather quite easily. Second, telescopes with mirrors take up less space because of their shorter focal distance. Third, telescopes with mirrors can be built far larger, 
because the mirrors themselves can be built larger. An achievement of Newton's that must not be overlooked is Newton's discovery of calculus. Although the discovery was not without controversy, Gottfried Leibniz also claims to have invented calculus at approximately the same time. Nobody really knows the truth, but it is accepted that they discovered it separately. In any case, it was a brilliant achievement by both scientists. Newton died in March 1727 and his body was laid to rest at Westminster Abbey in London, in a famous above-ground tomb. He was 84. That is the end of section 4. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, let's stop the audio on the website and uh, we'll go back and answer those uh, questions together and I'll talk a little bit of strategy on how and what. Okay, so first we had this flow chart. All right, everybody. Uh, for the flow charts, pay special attention to dates and names. Okay. The reason why is because they will help you to position yourself in the audio so you know when the answers are coming, okay? So here in this case, um, Isaac Newton was born in 1643, studied at King's School in Grantham from the age of, and so for number 31 here, you put in two numbers, 12 and 17, and you need those two, 12 comma 17 in your answer sheet. That's right, so 12, and uh, 12 and uh, 17. So those are the correct answers. If you got those two, you're on the right track, okay? All right, and then uh, Isaac Newton leaves school and his mother attempts to make him into a what for number 32. It was very visual. Najak Deep says, it's child's play for me. Um, yes, Najagdeep, watch your spelling on child's play. There's an apostrophe there and it's P-L-A-Y. Okay, uh, a farmer, yes. Farmer. That's right. Uh, in 1661, so again, you position with that number, 1661. On the recommendation of his teachers, he is admitted to Trinity College in Cambridge. IELTS is uh, largely created or made by Cambridge. And look at that, Cambridge already existed back then. Uh, six years after beginning, Newton becomes a something. What did he become? A teacher. That's right, very good. Zafar Beck became a teacher. So Newton was a teacher at Cambridge. Okay, good. You can use all capital letters like Chen is showing, so you can go all uppercase. Just remember students, uppercase slower and more prone to mistakes when you're using all uppercase, okay? All right, now here, um, we had to match the scientist with the correct answer. And a lot of uh, students have trouble with this kind of a question. So notice how I was kind of taking notes here instead of paying attention to the questions. So number 34 was believed that planets move or moved in an ether. Number 34. Yeah, I wrote the notes up there, right? So that was C. Uh, very good, Gopu. Okay. Developed a theory which was thought to replace the earlier theory of gravity, number 35. Yeah, D. It's also logic, right? Einstein is the only scientist that lived after Newton. Okay. So uh, Descartes and Galileo lived before Newton. So that would not make sense to choose uh, C or A. 
So here logic will help you also. So always keep logic close. Okay. Keep your friends close. Keep logic even closer. Okay. I, I saw that on a grocery bag the other day. It was a little bit different. Keep your friends close. Keep farmers closer. <laughs> I just replaced farmers with logic. Uh, okay. So uh, number 36. In the experiment of the mind. It's a billiard ball, right? Uh, tells us the billiard ball is smooth. Uh, who was that? So Newton and Einstein had this billiard ball experiment going on. And number 36, the ball is smooth. The answer there was Newton. That's right, 36 is Newton. Very good, Manas. Very good, Snehal. Okay. All right, uh, used not mirrors, but lenses in the construction of the telescope. And I believe was the very first person to say, hey, the world is round. And the church did not like that. And also said, hey, the world is not the center of the universe. Ooh, the church really didn't like that. All right, uh, who was this person? It was Galileo. Absolutely. Okay. C, D, B, A. Those are your answers for 34, 35, 36, and 37 in that order. Okay. Write no more than two words and or number for each answer. Telescopes with lenses cannot be built as large as telescopes with mirrors because large lenses tend to no more than two words and or a number number 38 what happens to large lenses snehal says they lose their shape now snehal you almost got it right but you got it wrong because of the spelling snehal it's not loose it's lose Najagdeep also same mistake. It's not loose, it's lose. Abdul Rahman says loses something, laugh out loud. Ooh, students, so many spelling mistakes with the word lose. Lose. Shape. Okay? Or the other word you could have used is warp. And they used both of those. So both of those are correct. Okay? Okay, students, please remember this. Uh, lose, okay, versus loose. Don't make that mistake. Okay, different pronunciation as well, different spelling, so they're not homonyms. Okay, so uh, lose means uh, to not find or to misplace or alter in this case. And loose means the opposite of tight, right? Not tight. Uh, a uh, wrong fit with too much space. Okay, so two different words. Okay, keep that in mind, students. Don't make that mistake. Definitely you will get it wrong if you write lose instead of, or loose instead of lose. Okay. Um, all right. Telescopes with mirrors take up less space because of their reduced number 39. That was a band nine level answer. Anybody get that? I think it's Anna. It says focal distance. Amra says focal distance. Yeah. That's right. They don't need as much focal distance. They have a shorter focal distance so they can focus at a shorter distance. Okay, that's why refracting telescopes are compressed. Focal distance, good. Okay, uh, number 40, multiple choice. This is where you want to, um, again, take notes and listen for the answer. The big mistake with multiple choice is candidates look at the choices and there's a lot of information there and the audio is going and by the time you figure it out, it's gone. So instead, you need to think and listen for the answer. 
Discovery of calculus, Leibniz invents at the same time, but separately. Mm-hmm. Let's see which one matches. Newton and Leibniz discovered calculus together. They're like, hey, good job, hey, good job, high fives, high tens. Uh, no, I did not see them high tening each other. Uh, Newton and Leibniz discover calculus separately during the same period. Hey, that looks good. Newton and Leibniz discovered calculus separately while working at the same university. Leibniz was not at Cambridge. So B is the correct answer. Uh, students, what did you get? And uh, out of 10, hopefully you got six or more for part four. Okay. Now, if you were in class last week for the listening, what did you get from 40? So what did you get from the 20 last week and the 20 this week? If you can remember, we can check your score on the website. On the very bottom of the website, there is a score calculator. Dylan says, I got 37. Dylan, that is an 8.5, good job. Okay, Amra says 36. I think that is an eight. Yes, Amra, it's an eight. Nilupuli says, I got 39. That's impressive. That's a band nine. Fuang says 31. That's a band seven. 35, Chayani is a band eight. 34, Najagdeep is a band 7.5. Natty, 33, I think is a band 7.5. Okay. Bopur says, I got 27. Bopur, you got a 6.5. So again, that's another nice feature of the website. It's the calculator, okay? Um, to access the calculator, uh, here, that's the URL, okay? In the chat there for everybody. Students listening, visualize, know your strategies, especially for those multiple choice questions. Um, remember to use logic, never panic, right? So if you miss an answer, it's not the end of the world. There's a good chance you can figure it out. So keep that in mind. All right, everybody. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to have uh, speaking part two, speaking part three. Uh, part two will be for members and part three will be for everybody to join in on the chat and we're actually going to speak. So we talk to our students, we give you band score estimates, we tell you how to improve, we practice with each other. So tomorrow we'll be doing that. Um, in the meantime, hey, check out ahelp.com, gltshelp.com for lots more videos and content. Uh, again, remember what I said. It's worth signing up for those premium versions of our course. Um, all you have to do is a click the red button, okay? And uh, you're good to go. Uh, students, thank you so much for your participation. Keep up the good work. And hopefully I will see all of you back here uh, tomorrow with me uh, to uh, practice speaking and improve your language, your comprehension, your fluency, not just for IELTS, but for more success in everyday life. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out from Canada, Victoria, here on the West Coast. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye for now.